Okay, so our first volume example. The region above bounded by y equals x squared, which is this lower curve, and y equals 2x, which is this upper curve. So let me, let me actually color that in. We'll, we'll use these enough that it's worth seeing. So this is the y equals x squared. It's, already la it's also labeled on the graph. This is the y equals 2x up here. Is the base of, sol of a solid S. If the cross sections perpendicular to the x axis are squares, what is the volume of the solid? Okay, so I'm gonna, I'll, I'd be really bad at drawing this. Let me just do a really, really quick sketch. So if we sort of laid this a little bit flat, pushed this axis down a little bit, we could see that this is pretty much the shape. Then we get when we lay that down a little bit flatter, because now we can see that the cross sections perpendicular to the x-axis here are all squares. Okay, well that's a, an awful square, but okay, all squares, and they get they start small over here. They get bigger as we get towards this middle area where the curves are farthest apart and they get really small again out here on the edge. Okay, and we can see perpendicular to the x-axis, so basically what this means is for any one of my squares, so if I cut it with this plane perpendicular to the x-axis, the side length of the square will be right here. We pull off our square so this looks like it might have been maybe this square right here that we're cutting off, okay? So we cut that through with the plane, okay? And so that's the side length of a single square. And I recall I'm doing this perpendicular to the x-axis, so I'm going to move this. Let me actually draw a little error to show you. I'm going to actually take this all the way from 0 up to 2. The reason it goes from 0 to 2 is we are starting and stopping this region when these two are equal. So I have 2x equals x squared, and I solve this and I get x squared minus 2x equals 0. I factor it to see that x times x minus 2 equals 0, and from this I get that x equals 0 or 2. So that just basically tells me that I'm cutting these anywhere. So I can cut it there, I can cut it over here, but I don't care about cutting it over there because I'm not in the region, and that's what the 0 and 2 tell me explicitly. Okay, so we know that this side length of the square is this distance between the two curves. And it's the difference in their y values. So how we can find that is this y value is 2x. It's the top of the curve. This y value is x squared. So I know that s the side length of my square is equal to 2x minus x squared. And that's a start. And something else that is very, very nice, my area, the area of each square in terms of s is s squared. Okay, so, so far no big surprises. And if we recall from our introduction to this, since I'm going along x's, the volume of this shape will equal the integral from, I'll just put it in the formula, a to b of some area function for x, the cross-section areas, dx, which will actually be the really small heights of these approximations I'm using. And we already found out, okay, I'm doing the integral from 0 to 2. Um, I have a function for area, but it's not in terms of x yet. So let's work on that a little bit. Area in terms of s is s squared. 
S is 2x minus x squared. So I know that the area function in terms of x is equal to 2x minus x squared squared. And I'm going to use this down here. Let's bring it all together to see that the volume of this weird shape, you know, it looks, I don't even know what this looks like. It looks like a fish sort of square thing. I don't know. Um, but this, the volume of this shape will be equal to the integral, since I'm going along axis, cutting along axis, from 0 to 2 of my area function in terms of x, which is 2x minus x squared squared. dx. And let's do this all analytically. We don't need calculators for this. So um, easiest way I think to do this is actually square this through. So equal, still the integral from 0 to 2 of, and when I square that through, I'm going to actually uh, move this out to the front. So I'm going to actually get x to the fourth minus 4 x cubed. That's going to be really nice because the 4 is going to cancel out on that one. I don't like fractions so I can avoid it. Um, plus 4x squared dx. Okay, let me double check. So we squared this, got the x to the fourth, squared this, got 4x squared, and 2 times these. Okay, so now we'll do the antiderivative. So let me bring this up. That will equal the antiderivative of this is x to the fifth over 5 minus 4 x to the fourth divided by 4 plus 4 x cubed over 3. So we have some fractions. Oh well. Um, cancel out some things so this 4 over 4 is gone. Oops, almost forgot to put in there. We're evaluating this as x goes from 0 to 2. And now we can just put in our 2 and our 0. So if I put in the 2, I get 2 to the 5th over 5, 32 fifths. We'll get there in a second. Minus 2 to the 4th plus 4 times... times 2 cubed over 3. Let me put a multiplication sign here. Just multiplication, they're not mixed numbers. That's why I put in the 2. If I put in the 0, 0 to the 5th, 0. 0 to the 4th, 0. 0 to the 3rd, 0. It's just going to be a big old whopping 0. Don't need to worry about that. Okay. Um, so 2 to the 5th is 32. So I get 32 fifths. 2 to the 4th is 16, minus 16. 2 cubed is 8, times 4 gives me 32, so plus 32 thirds. The common denominator across the board here is going to be 15, so I'll multiply this by 3 over 3, and I'll get 96 fifteenths. Multiply this by... 15 over 15, and um, 15 times 15 is 225, I know that. Add on another 15, because I have 16 of them, and I get 240 over 15. And 32 times 5, because that'll get that to nominate be 15, so that gives me, um, let's see, it's going to be 160 over 15. Let's see, so 96 plus 160 gives me 256, um, minus 240 gives me 16 fifteenths. And I'll double check that before I post this video on the calculator, but that should be final answer, volume of this solid.